whatever you do, do it heartily. That means you do it from your heart. And receive the reward of your inheritance. Because see, as a part of the family of God, we're <coughs> going to be rewarded. But we shouldn't do things just because we want to be rewarded. We want to share the gifts that God's given us with others. Now, I'm going to ask you this point where we're going to make a big promise, okay? Now, nobody's got homework this week, right? Oh, well, Miss T's got homework for us this week. I want you to pinky promise me that you'll take this paper this week, and I want you to think of one person that you would like to do something special for. And what this is, this is a little coupon. You can maybe get your mom or dad or somebody to help you. Put it out, and it says that I have a special gift. Now I want you to think about something special you can do this week. And if what you do, it says this certificate entitles the special person. Guess who the special person is? You are the special person. You're going to write your name in that first line, okay? This is your promise, your pinky promise. And you're going to share something this week with someone. Now I want you to think about what you want to do. It may be that you need to forgive somebody. It may be that you need to go visit somebody. It may be that you haven't cleaned up your room and you really, really should do that to help your mom and dad out. Help around the house. Anyway, on the second line, you write down what you plan to do, your gift you're going to give this week. And then on the very bottom line right here, you're going to write your name. And what that's doing, you're making a commitment that this week you're going to do something special for somebody else, okay? All right, and then maybe next week y'all can come back and share with me something special you did for someone, okay? All right, let's pray. Dear God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for each and every person that's here, God. We know in your eyes, God, we are all special. God, we thank you for sending Jesus to give us that special gift of salvation that we can be a part of your family. And God, I pray this week that not just in the life of these children, our lives, God, that we could think of something that we could do special for someone this week, that we could be a true witness for you, that someone else could see God's love for us. And God, I just pray for these families. I pray that we will be the witnesses to the church that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <coughs>
glad that somebody Jesus touched me. How about you? Amen. 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 You got some more support coming in back there, but your reserves just come in. That's the boys need a sheet signed to get back in and bless you. He'll let me know I'll sign it. Okay? <laughs> Amen. Good to be God this morning. We'll have the pleasure now of having a young man that I've known Lord, since he got here. I've known about all his life. I know his family. His dad's as good a friend as I got. Uh, his dad I can call on day or night. His dad's already scheduled to take care of what funeral arrangements is going to be took care of for Jimmy Floyd. I have a great love for my cousin. And therefore, when he told me that men could answer the call into the ministry, then surprise me. brought joy to my heart. Uh, he's got him over to a waiting in the wings. They just wait on no, what for they just wait. They get tore loose out a while. But then this year is going to come up here and share his life with us. Share his heart and share God's word. Would you pray for Benji Epson? Come on, brother. God bless you. Let's pray.
by the which will we are sanctified through the, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifice, which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin, sat down at the right hand of the Lord, <coughs> from henceforth, expecting until his enemies had made a footstool for his feet. For, one, for by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he said before, This is the covenant with that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my, my laws in their hearts, and in their minds I will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now, where the permission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Let's pray. Heavenly you know, Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for the ability to open your word. I thank you for the ability to understand God. I pray that while I'm up here, God, that your Holy Spirit yeah. will empower me to preach this message, God, and that you will speak through me, God. I know that I cannot do this on my own. And God, I pray that you will give me the words to say, God. Let your word speak for itself, God. And I pray that the people in this in this, this audience today, God, in this congregation, God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will do your work that only you can do. And I pray that they will hear this message, God. And I pray that there is anyone who has not understood that they are dead in their sin, God, and need of a Savior, God. I pray that they would do that today. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
The first question is, what is the purpose of the priestly system in the Old Testament? The second, the second question is, how is the priesthood, how is the priestly system in the Old Testament different from the priesthood of Christ in the New Testament? And the third is, how do we respond as a group, as a congregation, as the children of God, to the priesthood of Christ? So the first question, I mean, we're, going to get, we're going to jump right in here. The first question is, uh, what, what was the purpose of the priestly system in the Old Testament? Well, the author of Hebrews comes right out and says, it says, for the law, in verse 20, it says, for the law having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the, com the comers thereunto perfect. What the author of Hebrews saying, is saying is that those sacrifices that were offered in the Old Testament were only a shadow of what was to come in Christ. Amen. So what he's saying is that all of these sacrifices that they offered continually, year by year after year after year, would, could never make perfect those in the Old Testament. So these sacrifices, and, and he goes on, let's, let's continue. For then would they have not have ceased to be offered, because the worshippers, having once, having once purged, should have no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is impossible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Amen. So what he is saying is those, those Old Testament, we have to understand what they meant to do in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, God put this priestly system in line. And what they were supposed to do was they were, the, the high priest was anointed. He would come he would offer a sacrifice for himself first, and then he would offer a sacrifice for the people. And he would use the blood of a bull and the blood and the blood of a goat. And a lot of people, even today, still think that those sacrifices are what saved those people in the Old Testament. But that's not the case at all. The author of Hebrews says here in verse number four, for it is an, it is not possible that the blood of the bulls and the goats takes away sin. Yeah, right. So when people yeah. say including the Jews, they think that these sacrifices and, and by obeying this law that they can be they can be made holy and they can be made clean by these blood and these bulls and these goats. And the author of Hebrews is saying, those are only a shadow of the good things to come. So what was the purpose? We have to go back to our first question. What was the purpose of that? Was the purpose of, of those bulls and the goats to actually cleanse the people of their sin? Or was it to shadow forth what was to come in Christ? Yeah, yeah. Come so the people of the Old Testament, we've been to, in understanding that, we have, to, we have to declare that the people of the Old Testament were not saved by putting their faith in those sacrifices. What they were saved by was putting their faith in the coming sacrifices that, that was some, the, the blood of the angels and goats was symbolic of. Right. So the priest would come, offer the sacrifice of the blood of the bulls and the goats, and foreshadows what Christ did on the cross. Christ, as our high priest, goes to the cross offering himself the true sacrifice yeah. as, our, as our sin. So the people who say the Old, Te the Old Testament people were saved the same way we are. John 14, 6 says that uh, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Yeah. The people in the Old Testament were saved by looking at Christ. And putting their faith in Him. Right. And we are saved by looking back at what Christ has already accomplished. Mm -hmm. And putting our faith in that. Amen. So the people in the Old Testament and us, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no, there's no man comes to the Father except through Him. So from the very beginning of time, to the very end of time, the people who are saved are the people who put their faith in Christ. Amen. Okay? So the first, the answer to the first question is, what was the purpose of the priestly system in the Old Testament? The purpose is to point them to Christ. Yeah. And so that they can have faith in the coming Messiah. It was a constant reminder year by year that these things never, it was not the sacrifices, it was not the blood of the bulls and the goats that took the boy to sin. Amen. That's why. Turn, turn me in your Bibles to Psalm chapter 51. We'll go back to the Old Testament. Prove this. Psalm chapter 51. In the context of this verse, we have David. He's committed a sin with Bathsheba. Everybody knows what happened there. And he is broken before God. And he comes to God, praying to God, asking for forgiveness. And he says in Psalm 51, in his prayer, asking for forgiveness, he says at the end, 
Verse number, verse number 16. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart. Oh God, thou wilt not despise. Yeah. So essentially the same thing that David is saying here in Psalms is what the author of Hebrews is saying again in Hebrews 10. He's saying that these sacrifices that the, the, the priests made, they were not they were not sufficient to cover sin. The only sufficient sacrifice to cover sin is that of Christ on the cross. Come on, All these sacrifices was the point us to Christ and what he was going to do. That's the first question. The second question has three parts. The second question is, how is the priesthood in the Old Testament? How do we look at what the priest in the Old Testament did and see the differences in what Christ did in the New Testament? The first question, the, the, the answer has three parts. The first way that the, that the priests in the Old Testament were different than the priests in the New Testament well, so let's turn, let's turn to Leviticus 16 so we can see this. Let's turn to Leviticus chapter 16. Leviticus chapter 16. We'll begin reading in verse number 11. But in order to understand the differences in what the Old Testament, the differences between the priest and the Old Testament, we have to go back to the Old Testament and see what their purpose was, and then go forward to the New Testament and see the purpose of Christ. Okay? So in Leviticus chapter 16, we're going to begin reading in verse number 11. And Aaron shall bring the bullet of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house. He shall kill the bullet of the sin offering, which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar, before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that a cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he did not. And he shall take the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward, and before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood of the, with his finger seven times. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering, that is for the people. And bring his blood within the veil. And do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock. And sprinkle it on the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. So what just happened here, Levit Leviticus 16, God commanded the Levitical priest, the high priest, to come. And before he could offer a sacrifice for the people, he must first offer a sacrifice for himself. Right. Why? Because since Adam, every man who lived after him has broken the commandments of God, has sinned. Right. And because he has broken the commandments of God, this priest, the only thing different between him and another Israelite was that he was anointed by God to be the priest. So, he's no different than any other man. So before he can go into the Holy of Holies, before he can approach the presence of God, he must first have to offer a sacrifice for himself, because he is not clean until he does that. And then once he does that, then he may go in and offer a sacrifice for the people. So we see that as, the, as what in Leviticus chapter 16 is what the, the Old Testament priests had to do. But Christ, what do we say? What, what's the difference in, in Christ? Christ is already perfect. Christ is not sin. Christ has not broken the law. So, when he goes to offer the sacrifice himself, he can offer it without having to offer a sacrifice for himself. Amen. He goes to offer a sacrifice for the people without first having to offer a sacrifice for himself because he is already perfect. So, the difference between Christ in the, in the, in the New Testament and the Old Testament priests was that the Old Testament priests, because they were unperfect, because they were a, person, a people just like me and you, they would first have to offer a sacrifice for themselves to cleanse themselves before they would go in and offer a sacrifice for people because the Holy of Holies was considered the centralized presence of God. And if they were to walk in to the Holy of Holies, well, they would be sinful and oh. sin in their life, they would die on the spot because you cannot come into the presence of the Holy God unholy. Amen. So they would tie a rope around the priest's foot just in case he'd go, he went in there unholy and he would die on the spot and they would have to pull him out if he had sin in his life. Come on. 
Christ, on the other hand, comes to the cross, offering himself as a sacrifice. Right? Not he, he did not offer on the cross. Christ is not offering a sacrifice for himself. He was the sacrifice for me. And me. Amen. So when he died on the cross, he is the priest offering himself as a sacrifice. And what does it say back in Hebrews 10? Turn back to Hebrews 10. Sorry, I know a lot of turning. Hebrews chapter 10, it says, uh, in verse number 5, when, when, Wherefore, when he come, talking about Christ, into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. Yes. So Christ is saying, those sacrifices in the Old Testament that we talked about earlier, you did not desire those. You desired my body. From the very beginning, when Adam and Eve sinned, the sacrifice for sin was Christ. And he's saying that you desire my body back then, and you're still desiring my body now. And I'm coming to offer the true sacrifice, my body, broken and bled out on the cross for me and you. That is it. So the difference is, the second difference, or the first difference in Christ uh, is that he would have to offer, the second difference is Christ offered himself rather than offering an animal. Oh. Okay, so the second the second difference is the priests in the Old Testament sacrificed these animals, and they brought these animals, but Christ offered Himself. Amen. Turn to Isaiah chapter fifty-three. All right. Isaiah chapter fifty-three. <coughs> Christ, uh, Isaiah, this, the prophet Isaiah is describing this coming sacrifice that is to come in Christ, and saying what what Christ has done for us. <laughs> Verse number seven. It says, He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and food shall declare his generation, for he was cut off from the land of the living, meaning he was dead. For the transgression of the people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and the rich with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence. Neither was there any deceit. And <coughs> Christ is perfect. We're going back to how the, the difference between the, 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 the priest in the Old Testament and our great high priest of Christ. He is perfect. It says right here that, that he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit. It's been sinless. That's the first difference that we see. And the second difference is he came, he came offering himself as a sacrifice. Right. Let's, let's continue. Uh, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. Without, with, when thou shalt make a soul, make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He will see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall, shall my righteous servant justify me, for he shall bear their iniquity. Verse number eleven points <coughs> out the difference between. Sacrifices of the Old Testament and the, and, and the true sacrifice in Christ in the New. The Old Testament sacrifices do not satisfy. It says in Hebrews that if you desire not those sacrifices, the blood of the bulls and the goats cannot cover sin. But when he's talking about Christ here, what does he say in verse number 11? He shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. God was satisfied. With Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Because that was the true sacrifice. That was the only perfect lamb. Right. It Amen. was the only perfect lamb. Spread out on the cross. Amen. He shed his blood. Christ came as our high priest. Offering his blood. The cross was his tabernacle. Right. And he offered himself as our sacrifice. And he split the veil. Making it possible for me and you. To come before God. Right. Through Amen. the blood of Christ. And pray to him daily. Third difference that I don't see. This is something that really just kind of. I, I kind of knew these first two differences, but when I when I really started studying this, this is what just came out and just hit me. I was like, man, that is so awesome. Second, the third difference is that the priests in the Old Testament, their job was never finished. Turn with me again to Hebrews chapter ten. In 
verse number 11. It's, verse number 11 is talking about the priests of the Old Testament. It says, And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. Then we go back to verse number 1. It says, For the law having a shadow of good things come, um, not the very image, can never with those sacrifices which are offered year by year continually make perfect those who draw near. So in the Old Testament, what they would do, the priests would work. It says in verse number 11, they were standing daily, continually offering these sacrifices. Year by year, they would go get a sacrifice from a family, go, go to the altar, shed the blood, go back, get another sacrifice from another family, go to the, blood, the altar, shed his blood, go to another family. And they were continually on their feet. Their job was never finished. They're continually, every day, Every, every year, a continuous reminder of their sin was they were going, getting the sacrifice, coming back, offering the blood. Then we see a difference. They were constantly standing. The priests were constantly standing. Then we see the best difference that we can praise God for today. Verse number 12. But this man, Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice himself, what did he do? He sat down at the right hand of God. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Henceforth expecting until his enemies be made his footstool. So Christ, unlike the priests of the Old Testament, their job was never finished. They were continually walking back and forth, getting one, getting another, getting another, offering, getting another, offering, year after year after year. And time after time, Christ offers it once himself. Because he is the true sacrifice, Lord, because he is the perfect sacrifice, he sits down at the right hand of God. Amen. Because he has defeated his enemies, as it said in verse number 13, his enemies of sin and of death. And they are his footstool now because he has conquered those. And how awesome is it to know that our priest is finished? Right. His work is done. So right. on the cross, when he says, it is finished, Amen. He's talking about his priestly work and, and the work that he came and the atonement that he came to provide to us. So that's the, that's the three differences that we have between the Old Testament priest and our New Testament priest of Christ. Yes. So then, in closing, how are we, how are we to respond to this message? <laughs> well, Mr. Jimmy, and myself, and my dad, all, all preachers, all pastors, occasionally when we, when we preach and when we do a message, we will come at the end of the sermon and we will make an application, which means apply it to your life in some, in some way, form, or fashion. And that, that's not a wrong thing to do. God has given us this Bible to apply our life. It is, it is very applicatory. And we, can, and we can do that very, very well. But in Hebrews chapter 10, He's already given us the application. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He comes after that, after he talks about how Christ is our high priest and how he is different and how he is the perfect high priest and how he is the perfect sacrifice. And he gives us the application. So I can come up and give you a, probably a good application for this message. But what better application than Scripture itself? Amen. The author of Hebrews tells us Amen. Amen. So let's go right here in verse number 19 of Hebrews chapter 10. This is in light of all of this, all that we have learned, all the, all the differences between the Old Testament high priest and the New Testament high priest in Christ. And, he said, and the author of Hebrews says this in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh, his sacrifice. And having a high priest over the house of God, that's Christ. Amen. Now he's talking to us. Let us draw near yeah. with a true heart in full assurance of faith. <clears throat> having our hearts sprinkled and from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. Let us hold fast the, the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. And let us.